Hey. We're sure sure, and this is a KCR secret session. Well, Chris and I met like the first day of class in college, and we formed a band because we had similar music taste. I think you said something about Radiohead. Well, in the, it was a rock and rhetoric. It was called rock and rhetoric, and we the first day of class we gave the class our you know favorite artists, and he said Radiohead, and I said like Fleet Foxes, and then Nick Drake, I think. Drake. And then we decided to start a band that day. So we had a college band. And then four years later, after we graduated, we wanted to play with Kevin, who we knew through a mutual friend. And um, so we moved down to LA to play with Kevin. And we happened to move into Mike's house, in which he had set up a home studio. He's our producer. And so it just kind of naturally all came together, basically, yeah, in 2015, when we moved to LA. Uh, from a music scene standpoint, uh, I don't know. It's interesting. San Francisco has a really like vibrant like garage rock scene. It feels like, or at least that's the that's the scene that I'm keyed into yeah. in SF. Um, it's a much. It's a very raw. Yeah. Scene in SF. I I, I love the scene. I there. love the, it. Yeah, the musicians are really cool. Uh, in LA, there's so many bands. Yeah. Uh, and there's definitely some raw bands, uh, but there's also a lot of um, bands who aren't raw or like are more into marketing or like it's yeah. just a much di- much more diverse range of artists yeah. which is great and maybe there's negatives to that too but i i love la too. yeah LA, scene is fun. la is interesting i feel like in san francisco there's scenes that you can kind of plug into whereas in los angeles you need to uh uh kind of create a scene around yourself or it's i don't know it feels suddenly or strangely i feel like los angeles is more insular yeah. It's weird. A few people feel it like, like yeah. move to Los Angeles like and, and play music. It's like, yeah, but everybody's like, there's so many people doing that and it's hard. I don't know. You really got to yeah, find people uh, to, to play with and stuff like that. I think it, it was OK. It was too. So we were watching like the Stop Making Sense yeah. video of it on YouTube and it's such a great performance and then also we were toying around with our roommate scott's prophet 08 synthesizer which had a sequence on it a sequence it has a sequencer so we programmed the bass line from that song and then just and then the song just kind of somehow happened i don't even remember we just recorded it yeah we recorded it before we ever played it live Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was pretty pretty spontaneous um, didn't really think too much about anything. We tried to like copy the parts in the original song, um, but just with different instruments, I guess. But then we also added a bunch of new stuff as well. Oh man! Uh, and tonight, tonight, yeah, I mean, yeah. every all, night. every <laughs> so every fun. venue is like kind of unbelievably magical that yeah. we've played the neptune i mean I, I hadn't even been to seattle or oregon or portland um yeah i don't know yeah. so, like it's great that it's it's just awesome that hippo brought us along for this because these theaters feel kind of special yeah for sure fillmore being from the bay area fillmore yeah, that was uh fun. two nights ago two nights ago was yeah. uh <laughs> was 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 Really, really fun. Brooklyn's gonna be. Brooklyn's gonna be wild. And lit. Liddy. Nice, Liddy. Dude. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, and then uh, St. Paul. I'm just excited because it's yeah. gonna be. It's like a homecoming show for Hippo, and it's just gonna be. It's a very large room. <sighs> it's yeah. great. Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all the all these big venues have like mythological feels. I like know. like uh, the Neptune had all these stained glass windows with King Neptune. King Neptune. And the yeah. Imperial in Vancouver. The Imperial. If, as, if you get to a certain point of ve- of venue capacity, it has to become mythological. I yeah. think it's or yeah majestic in yeah, some yeah. way, which yeah, no. which taps into the like humanities yes worshiping and like exactly 
stuff. Not that and people then are worshiping us. If you keep us, getting but. bigger, it's like just about cars. It's like the Honda Center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you get into like, yeah. Brands. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, good apples. Yeah. There's a yeah. massive the, the like poster. bucket at the yeah. entrance. Uh, Terrifying. The the posters are also quite special. Yeah. They do that and they give it to everyone, right? Just a special place. Also, their dinner was fucking good. Yeah, it was really good. Really good dinner. Thank you, Fillmore. Nice. Quite nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Great, but ready to you know move on and and keep. I mean, we have all all kinds of new songs that we're already recording, so. But it feels it's great to get all those songs out there because we've been sitting on a lot of them for a while. Um, yeah. Huh. What happens right now? Well, what happens usually is it rings a landline telephone in our house. Uh, which is real and which we sometimes answer. What happens now, since we're on the road, is Charlie set it up. He's an ingenious guy. Yeah. Set it up so that it forwards to all of our cell phones and that the way we know if we're getting a call like from the landline is all of our phones ring at the same time. Um, and sometimes we answer. If we're in the van and it's like a seven hour drive somewhere, we'll answer the phone. Give us a call. What's it number? Yeah, call us. It's three two three seven. Uh, it's it's three two three seven three nine oh six three zero. That's three two three seven three nine oh six three zero. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have the technology? Right here, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking ahead. <laughs> Uh, it's usually new people. Yeah, yeah. No. we get it's it's a pretty diverse. Like we got invited to a party one Saturday night, like five minutes from our house. <laughs> that was so, so we went fun. to the party. We advertise that we offer relationship advice yep. in our bio, so we've given a, a little bit of yep. relationship advice. One of my was it? Oh. one of my favorite ones uh, was this this person called and we picked up and they were silent, silent for a second. We're like, hello, is you sure? And they're like, oh. Uh, like wrong, wrong number and, and hung up uh, and then and then they called back like five minutes later and we're really honest they're like hey like I just want to take us like I lied last time like I was actually calling for you guys yeah. and then we had like a 20 minute conversation with this but really how, nice guy how <laughs> nice is that like when you're just like I lied <laughs> no one does that no one is that honest that was really refreshing yeah, yeah nice. a nice. lot actually a lot of we get, do get I feel like 25% of the calls are like somebody yeah, we we answer like, hey, it's for sure, and then they it, they hang up. Yeah, pretty immediately. They they get like really nervous, or some people do, especially when it's relationship advice. Like what we got a call. We got like five calls. Someone me. called us three times, and we all every time we learned a little more about why they're calling. But that, that was so funny. And never, but they would always hang up. We never got the full story, yeah. right? They would start talking, and they were, and they would get partially into it, and then they would get nervous and just hang up. And it's like we didn't. Yeah, it was so it was so. Painful. Well, it was her friend, the, the right. girl who wanted relationship advice. Right. Didn't actually maybe want it. It was her friend who was trying to force it on her. I think. Yeah. So, <laughs> all kinds of calls. This Pink I, Moon by Nick Drake for okay. me. I don't know yet. Uh one one album. Can we do like a compilation of like Mozart or Bach? Or does that not count? What's the first Fleet Foxes album know. called Fleet Foxes? Yeah. Fleet Foxes by Fleet Foxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh mm, mm. uh the white album. Yeah, I would do a really long album yeah, like uh yeah. The White Album has all these short songs on it, but maybe it's, it's still, still long. It's still a double, though. Yeah. You could yeah. do, like, the deluxe. Oh, shit. I should have said All Things. I all well, yeah. you say All Things. I was going to say that one, because that one's hella long. Okay. <laughs> all Things Must Pass. George Harrison. Really good. Yeah. It's a hard question. 
I might also pick uh, The Reminder by Feist because it's relaxing. Soothing yeah. album. Yeah. It's loud forever. <laughs> That's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're going to be back May 2nd at the House of Blues in San Diego in the Voodoo Room. Why don't you? Yes, yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, now, Kevin. The questions now. <laughs> 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 <laughs>